when we graphed inequalities, they would only give us one at a time, right? And so yesterday you guys would graph the one line, you'd figure out if it was solid or dashed, and then you would shade one way or the other. Well, we just got done solving a system of equations. So remember that picture we just graphed on the do now? We were looking to see their point of intersection. Well, today we're gonna do a system of inequalities, which means we're gonna actually plot and connect two inequalities on the same coordinate plane. And we're gonna see where the shading would overlap. So if you guys think about this, since there's shading involved, I am not looking for just one point where the two lines cross each other. We are going to end up with something like this. So I need you guys to look up. We're going to end up with, you know, maybe there's some solid line here and maybe there's like a dashed line here or something. And if we're not looking for the point of intersection, we're looking for the shaded section. Well, how many different sections are there? Yesterday, there were just two, right? Yesterday, it was either you shade up or you shade down. Well, now we've got four potential sections and one of those sections will be the one that we shade and it's going to be all about where do they overlap each other so for instance i need you to look up please because this is this is not as easy as yesterday's if this dashed line let's say this dashed line had a greater than symbol okay watch this dashed line if it's greater i would shade this way right just looking at the dash line, I'd go this direction because that would be the above. If my solid line, let's say the solid line had a less than symbol. So here's my solid line. If I want to shade less than, we shade down, right? So then I would do this. So it appears to me that section one only has the green shading. Section three only has the pink, but what happens here in section two? They overlap each other. So this right here would be the section that we would shade. I wouldn't even shade these two. We would shade only the section where the shading overlaps each other. Okay, so it, it makes it a little bit more difficult than what we did yesterday because you do have to do two on the same coordinate plane. And then you have four sections to choose from instead of just two. All right. This is just a reminder. If there is an equal sign, we're making a solid line. And if there's no equal sign, it's dashed. Okay, so we went through that yesterday. Go ahead and turn the page. Turn the page, please. Now, I kind of gave you guys some notes yesterday as far as figuring out where the above and where the below is. So if we just have one line, it says, how do I tell which is the above side? It says, if you draw an arrow up from any line. So, you know, here's our line. If you were to draw an arrow pointing up, that's how you know that's above the line. Okay, so we would end up shading you know, this whole top section because that would be the above. So you can test it that way. Yesterday, I just kind of showed you with my arm. You know, if I've got a line going like this, if it's above, I'm raising my arm up versus lowering it down, okay? But the arrow is another really good way to figure out where to shade. Okay, now this line's going the opposite direction, but you can still use the same method. So if you have this line and you don't know where above is, just start at the line and draw an arrow facing up. And then that way, see, this is why I said yesterday it's important to extend this. You need a solid boundary, but we would end up shading this entire portion of the graph. All right, turn the page. This is just a lot of what we did yesterday, and then eventually we'll get to practicing with two of them. Okay, so now they're saying, how do you know which is below? So again, draw an arrow, like pick any point on that line, and just draw an arrow facing down. That's how you know where to do your shading.
And same thing with this way, this one. If your line is facing the other direction, you still just want to draw an arrow facing down, and that will help you as far as the shading goes. That will help us today when we're looking for the overlapped piece. All right, then you guys can turn the page. Okay, let's practice this. This again is just more practice with going from standard form. We're gonna go from standard form to slope intercept form because that's the form we like our lines to be in before we graph them. Okay, so two steps, and we just walked through these steps. Step one, we move, okay, so if that's a positive 2x, we are subtracting 2x from both sides. So negative 3y, and you bring your symbol down, which is less than. Perfect, yeah. We're going to put the negative 2x first. And then isn't that 6 a positive 6? So we'd put plus 6. So that's step 1. Divide by negative 3. And what happens when we divide by negatives? This symbol has to flip around. Can't forget that part. All right, negative two over negative three. Two negatives make positive and two thirds will not reduce. So that's our slope right there. And then these two, when we do the division, will give us our y-intercept. So six divided by negative three, negative two. So that right there is prior knowledge. That's just saying when you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the symbol around. Now, you just have to remember, don't flip it all the time. A lot of people think that it's based on, like, what their answer is going to be. Like, if their answer is going to be negative, they think they're supposed to flip it. That's not the case. It's always determined by the number you are dividing by. So the one I just highlighted, that's the one you have to be on the lookout for. Okay? All right, cool, down here at the bottom. These are just the rules. We talked about these yesterday. If it has an equal sign, it's solid. And then this one tells you about the dashed. So if there's no equal sign, it's dashed. Shade below if it's some form of less than. So these are shaded below because it was less. And then shade above if it's greater than. So this was greater than, so they shaded above. Okay, so those of you, if you weren't here yesterday or you kind of struggled a little bit yesterday, you've got extra sets of notes right here telling you all the rules. All right, flip it over. I just want to practice some, and all of these are like, okay. First, we're going to test to see if an ordered pair is a solution. Okay, so let me just explain something to you. If you were just given the picture and they said, is this ordered pair a solution? Here's the easiest way to do it. Are you watching? Plot that point. So negative 2, negative 3 would be located here. Is that point in, I know it's kind of light, but is that point in the shaded section? Oh, I can't tell which one was, yeah, it's right, it's this whole bottom section. Is that point in the shaded area? Okay, so 
Is that within the shaded area? Yes. Okay, so then we know it's a solution. I don't know why this is why, but. Because, I mean, I would have just said yes because it's in the shaded area, but they said that, essentially. So, what about 1, 3? If I plot 1, 3, no, and it's because it's not. It's not even a full sentence, but that's okay. That is not in the shaded area. versus the other one that is. So, I mean, in a perfect world, it'd be great if they just gave us the picture every time and we could just plot the point. That's the type we did yesterday. One line, one shaded section. No systems. So now we are going to graph two different lines and we're going to look for their shaded sections that would overlap okay so it's clear by this picture that we had some shading down here we had some shading up here here it's the darkest section of all that's where the overlap would be that is the only section I end up shading. I don't even show the lighter sections. I usually just show the piece that will be overlapped. And I'll show you how I do it. But this is essentially the type of work that we're going to do today. All right, then you guys can flip. Here we go. Now we get to practice. All right, good news. These are already in slope-intercept form. That's great. Let's get straight to graphing. So let's talk about this one first. Will this one be solid or dashed? That one's going to be solid. And is that above or below? Above. And then let's talk about the other one. And then I'll, leave, I'll, I'll end up graphing them both, but I just want to, I like to do this ahead of time. So if this one has an equal sign, it is solid, but then that's a less than symbol. So that would be, we'd end up shading that one below. Okay. So now let's, let's go back and let's graph the top one. What is my starting point? Negative three. Here has an intercept of negative three, and what's the slope? Positive four, so I'm going to stick a one under. When it's positive, where do we go? Up, right. Okay, so let's do it. We're going to go up four, right one. Up four, right one. If you go back to the starting point, is there room to go down four? Okay, so those are all the points that fit. You put your ruler down, and we already said it's solid. Down, make a solid line. Okay. And this is the other thing I want you to do. Are you watching? I'm not going to shade yet, but see how we said it was above? I want you to put the letter A next to that line. And I'll show you later why I'm doing that. Right now, if you were to look at this, is above to the left or to the right? Which way is the above? Left, right? Be over here. Okay, just think of that right now. And we'll worry about the shading here. So the other line. So this one, starting point, the y-intercept is positive 3, right? Okay, so put your dot at positive 3. 
and our slope is negative 2 over 1. And where do we go when our slope's negative? Down right. Okay, so I'm going to start at 3. I'm going to count down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1. You can get lots of points that way. And can't I still do another point up and left? Up to left 1. Now, yes, I see that these two lines cross at a specific point. For just a point of intersection, we're looking for a shaded section that would overlap. After I make my solid line, I'm going to put the letter B, not because it's the second line, but because this one gets shaded, sorry, this one gets shaded below, okay? In the past, most people who feel comfortable with graphing are good with that. It's the shading they struggle with. So I'm going to show you what I do. Okay, so can you guys just please watch what I do? Definitely using a pencil for this. Okay, what I normally do, do you all see four sections up there? Okay, so I don't care where you start numbering them, but just watch what I do. This top section I'm going to call one. Then I'm just going to kind of go around this whole section over here I'd call two. This one I'd call three, and then see how there's this big section over here? That would be section four, okay? Now watch and learn. Ready? You probably need to look at the board while I do this. Okay, I, I don't care which line we start with. Let's look at the pink line. Here's my pink line. The pink line line only is above 1 and 4 or 2 and 3. 1 and 4, right? Above this line would be these two sections. Yes? Okay. Then let's look at the green line. The green line we are supposed to shade below. Is that going to be 1, 2 or 3, 4? Which number do you see twice? Okay. If you see the 4 twice, that's the piece that would be overlapped. 1 would be light, 3 would be light, 4 would be the darkest section because that's where the shading would overlap. So I end up just... And then you guys don't really have to go back and like erase these. You can if it makes you feel better just to clean it up some, but... That's how I figure out where the overlapped. I don't like to see all the shading because then I get sometimes. So I like to just do this method where I number it. And if like if some of you guys had started here and did one, two, three, four, it doesn't really matter how you number them as long as you do like the same method that I just did. You're just looking for the number that you would see twice. Yay, are we good? Everybody's excited about doing these? Okay, well, let's try another one. Go down to the bottom. What form is this in? Point slope. It gives you a point and a slope. Okay, so let's talk about what the ordered pair is and what the slope is. What would my ordered pair be using these two numbers? Negative 1, negative 3. So again, point slope form, the number that's with x is the opposite of the x coordinate. So if this says plus 1, we make it negative 1. The number paired up with the y is the y coordinate, but you have to make it its opposite. So the plus 3 became negative 3. Which number is our slope? The 4, so I'm going to stick a 1 underneath it. So that one's ready to be graphed. We have everything we need. That symbol right there, would that be solid or dashed? Solid because of the equal sign. 
And then greater than, is that above or below? Above. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and graph that line and then I'll show you what we do with the other one. What'd you say? No, 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 it's okay. There's a tick mark there though. So they're only showing you the evens because they couldn't get every number to fit. But this line right here is the one. So we can at least count that. The other graph just didn't even have a line there. So we ended up with stuff in the middle of boxes and we're, that won't happen this time. Okay, so then this other one, or let's graph this. So start at negative one, negative three. So everybody watch. Negative one, negative three. Put that point on your graph. Then if our slope is positive four, where do we go? Up four and right one, okay? So starting at that point, go ahead and count up four, right one. Up four, right one, up four, right one. You could do that three times. So you've got four points so far. Then we go back to the starting point and we do down and left. Yep, down four, left one. You can only do that once. Okay, we said it was solid, yes. Okay. Solid line. And we said above, correct? Above? So I'm going to put the letter A next to it just for later, just for the shading later on. Now this other guy, this one, that's not in slope intercept form, is it? So we're going to take this right here. Oops, we're going to bring it over here. X plus Y is less than negative 2, and we're going to put that in slope-intercept form. So watch. Watch for me, please. I'm going to put ones in front of those letters, because if there's not a number there, I want one there. <clears throat> What's the only thing I need to do here? What I move? The one X, subtract one X. Here's the good news. You just have a positive one Y. That's all you got. We won't even have to do the division step unless we want to, because dividing by one won't change anything, right? Okay, these two do not combine, so we're gonna just write them sideways and put the X term first. So negative one X minus two, and like I said before, if it makes you feel better to go ahead and show division, dividing by one will not change anything. But some people just prefer to show it anyway. So I'd end up with negative one over one X minus two. So talk to me about the type of line and where the shading would go. Okay, so a dashed or dotted line. And then would that be above or below? Below, because it's less than. Okay, so let's plot our points. Where do I start? Negative two, right here. And if my slope is negative one over one, that is down one, right one. You're going to get lots of points. Lots of points. Down, right, down, right. And you just keep going till you run out of room that way. Because then where else can I go? Up, left, up, left. 
So yes, I see that my two lines will cross each other, but it's not at an ordered pair that we would even be able to like label because it's in the middle. Now look, before you guys put that ruler down, it's dashed. Okay, so you don't want to go through and just make one solid line. All I'm going to do is I'm going to make little, these are more like dots because the space is so small, but I'm just making little dashes or dots. When, you're, when your points are that close together, it's kind of hard to make it dashed. And we're gonna put a letter B next to that one because that shading, we want it to end up going below the line. Okay, do we all see four different sections? Are you able to see four sections on there? This is how I'm gonna number, again, it really doesn't matter, but like here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four. You know, you just, you just write one, two, three, four anywhere, as long as it's, you know, there's one number per section. And now let's talk about where the shading would go. So watch, the blue line, this one. This one is supposed to get shaded below. So is that one, two, or three, four? Three and four would be below the blue line. And then if we switch to the green line, so this one, here's the green one. Where's the above? One, four, or two, three? One, four. So see how that four is on there twice now? Shade section four only. What's up? You got to give me a minute. I can't write at this second. Okay. Are we good with that? And again, it's totally up to you. You know, if you guys want to go ahead and just erase those numbers just to make it look a little bit better. You're more than welcome to, but you don't have to. If you leave them there, obviously I'm still gonna be able to tell where your shading is. Bye. All right, you guys turn the page. We only have one more to do. And then the rest of these, they're just gonna ask us if ordered pairs are solution. So we'll just plot them and see if they're in the shaded section. So that, that'll go a lot faster. Okay, so let's go ahead and start changing these because both of these, again, they gave them to us in standard form instead of the form that we want them in. So we're going to have to move some stuff around, figure it out. Hmm? Okay, let's move the 4X. How do I move it? Subtract 4x. Do it on your paper, please. So you have negative 3y is less than, and then I'm going to write these two, but I'm going to write them sideways, and I'm going to put the x term first. So negative 4x, and that was a positive 9, so put plus 9. Then what do I divide by? Negative three? Go ahead and show that you're dividing by negative three. And since we're dividing by a negative, what's gonna happen? Yep, flip it. 
flip it around. Okay, so now we have negative four over negative three. Two negatives make a positive and four thirds will not reduce. And then nine divided by negative three is, so minus three, right? Right. It only flips when you're dividing by a negative number. Okay, so let's talk about um, what's happening here. This would be solid or dashed. Okay, and then greater than, is that above or below? Above. So let's go ahead and graph that one while we're still thinking about it. Okay, so the negative three, you start here. And then for four thirds, where do we go? Up four, right three. Good, so we're gonna count up four, right three. And we can only do that once. Now it was dashed, so you guys make sure that you, when you put that ruler down, you can't always just assume that you're going to be making ni nice solid lines. Okay, so you make that one dashed, and then I'm going to put the letter A next to it for above. I don't have any. Go get a paper towel. All right, so that one's done. Let's go over here. This one, we're going to move the X and then we'll divide by the three. So if I move X, I'm going to subtract one X from both sides. When you do that, you have 3y is greater than, and now this side, again, they don't combine, so I would just put the negative 1x first plus 6. And then we're going to go through and divide by positive 3. So since we're dividing by a positive, that symbol does not flip. Okay, so right here, negative one-third, not going to reduce. That top number is a one. You can't make it any smaller. So negative one-third x. And what's six divided by three, guys? Positive two.
Okay, let's talk about what the line would look like. Solid or dashed? Dashed. And then above or below? It's above, right? Because it's greater. Okay, so when we plot this, we're going to start at the positive 2. And with a negative slope, we're going down 1, right 3. So down 1, right 3, you can only do that once. But you can go back and go up 1, left 3. So make sure once you guys have those points plotted, when you put your ruler down, remember it is dashed. So do not make it solid. I'm going to put the letter A next to it for above. And then now we need to figure out where the shading goes. So let's say this big top section, I'm going to call that a 1. Tiny little section, a 2. Section down here, 3. And then we've got this big section over here that's a 4. Okay, so looking at the pink line, is 1, 2, or 3, 4 the above? 1, 2. Okay, so I'm going to write 1, 2. And then for the blue line, this one, is the above 2, 3, or 1, 4? 1, 4. Which number do you see twice? Okay, so section 1, this section up here, that's the section you guys would shade. And then we can get rid of the 2, 3, 4. There you go. Now, I would be thrilled if each and every one of you, at minimum, could get your two lines graphed. If you got this line and this line graphed and the only thing you were unsure of was the shaded, the shaded section, here's the good news. You have a 25% chance of getting it right even if you guess, right? I mean, there's only four choices. Pick one. I mean, this might be, this problem right here would be worth a lot of points because we had to turn both of them into slope-intercept form. Then you had to make both of them dashed, and then there's still a shaded section. So you're looking at, I don't know, five, six points, something like that. If you only missed the shaded section, you're only losing a point. So you're still going to get the majority of your points. So definitely focus on getting those lines graphed correctly. Okay, down here at the bottom, let's just plot these points and see if they fall in the shaded section. Ready? Guys, this is going to be the quick part, so follow. Follow along. 2, comma, negative 2. Is that in the shaded section? Okay, so is it a solution? Yes. And the reason is it is in the shaded area. Okay, then turn the page. <clears throat> um, I, look up here. This bottom little section, that's the one that's shaded. I don't know if you guys can tell that. That's what it looks like to me. This is shaded, and then on this one, it's this section. You kind of need to know that. The shading just didn't show up very well. <clears throat> negative 1, negative 4. Negative 1, negative 4. Yes or no? Okay, yes. And again, it's because it's in the shaded area. Write that down. Everybody should have it written down. Okay, how about this one? Negative 1, negative 2. Down here. Uh, yes or no? No not in shaded area. And then last one. 
negative 3 comma 1. Yes? It's in the shaded area. Okay, and then that's where we're going to stop for today. That's the end of your notes.